In this video, I'm going to go through a scenario where we're storing email addresses in a non-email field, which means that we can't use normal email notifications as part of workflows. Instead, we have to use custom functions. You can see a bit more context in this question in the Zoho subreddit. I'm going to go through how you'd set that up, because the key concern here is that if you're using a custom function, then that can get a little bit tricky. So we want to simplify it as much as possible. I've gone through and using the new version of the Zoho CRM API, they now allow you to send out emails via the API based on email templates. That makes it way easier because you then don't have to worry about populating the merge fields. You just give it a lead ID or any type of module, and then it's able to fill in the email template based on the template ID that you give it. The end result is that you have a custom function, which is pretty simple. This part here is all you need, where you'll have the template ID, the two email, the subject, which can be left blank to use the subject from the template, the from name, the email address that you're sending from, and then the module name and record ID. You've also got whether to use an organization email address. I'll explain that in a little bit more time. To start off with, let me show you what it looks like. I've got a, a template, this one here, where the subject line is Cybertruck SMS for lead ID. We're including a bunch of merge fields, including the first name, the organization, first name, last name, and website. So if I run that for this lead here, We'll shortly see that an email will arrive and we can make sure that it's properly filling out the merge fields so that this is really all we need to do. The email just came in, let's have a look at it. We can see immediately that the merge fields did work. We've got the lead ID there and we've got the website, first name, last name, and the organization name. So that seems to have all worked perfectly. We haven't had to hard code any of that or explicitly define what the merge fields were. Zoho's figured that out for us. To go into a bit more detail about how you would use this, you'd have a workflow rule. And inside that workflow rule, you would have a custom function like this. So make a new workflow rule so you can see what that might look like. We'll set up a new workflow rule. And then under instant actions, we'll choose function. We'll create a new function. Click on write our own. Can give it an appropriate function name. And then click on edit arguments. You'll see there you'll put lead ID, press the pound or the hash sign, choose leads, lead ID. Inside our workflow function, what we're going to do is to make it easy on ourselves, this will be all the code that we'll write. We'll just add in a few more parameters. Add in the lead email address. I'm just going to use email, but you would use the non-standard email field that you needed to use. You can leave subject as null. From name, you can put in your organization's name. For the from email, you have two options. You can either use 
the email address that's associated with your user. Or if you want to have what's called an organization email address, what you'll need to do is if you come under channels email, you can set up an organization email here. That's an email that can be used by any user. For example, I've set up this one that I'll use. If you do want to use an organization email address, you'll need to make sure that you have org email address set to true down the bottom here. Then you'll need to put in whatever the from email is. We'll put in the, I'm in the wrong one. Then the lead ID here. And the only other one that we haven't discussed is the template ID. In order to get the template ID, what you'll do is you will go into the template and the template ID will appear in the URL as soon as you open the template that you're going to use. For example, this one here. If I click on edit, we've got the template ID up here. Which is what I already had there. That's all you need to do at this stage, assuming that you've set a function. I haven't showed you that part yet. For that part, you're going to copy this code here that I'll share with you in the video description. Basically, what we're doing, just to explain it to you, we're getting all of the configuration for the email address, and then we're putting it in the right format in order to be able to trigger this API. The only other thing you'll have to do is you'll need to first set up a connection. You'll go to set up under developer space, choose connections, click on add connection, go to Zoho OAuth. You can call it something like sending Zoho email. Then scroll down, this is a bit annoying. There's no way to search, so you just have to scroll until you find the right one. It's called sohocrm.sendmail, and we'll do sendmail.all. This one here. Next, you'll authorize it. Now that you've done that, you've got a connection that you can use in the standalone function that we're about to create. Go to functions under developer space. Click on new function. Under category, choose standalone. And you can call it something like Send the email via Zoho API. You're going to paste in the code from the description. Make sure you add an argument called configuration. And after saving that, you should be able to use that within your workflow function. You'll put standalone first and then the name of the function that you just added. That's all you need to do. Let's test it out now. If I make a new lead where the organization contains blah, we should see that an email is sent automatically. We check the timeline now, we should see that our workflow rule was triggered and in turn, this function here was triggered. And we can see 
in the timeline that an email was sent. We can see that one was sent out. And the source, instead of being workflow alert, which would be, it would be if it was a normal workflow email notification, it comes up as individual. And I'll just have a look now and check that that one was received. There we go. Everything that we expected. The advantage of doing it this way is that for any other workflow rules, you don't have to rewrite the code to call the API. Instead, you just add this kind of code. And the only thing that you'll have to change is probably the template ID. Everything else will likely remain the same. I'll share all of the code in the description. Hopefully this helps.